If I want to draw a boat, say like this, the first thing I do is create a box that that boat would fit into. And I'm going to show you that in the next illustration. This represents the perspective layout of the block or box that that boat would fit into. The first thing I must do is X the forward plane. That is, run a line from corner to corner, and then from this corner to the opposite corner. That gives me the true center line. Then I can extend that center line back toward the vanishing point. Then I can fake the curvature of the boat within that block. That is the upper portion of the block. Then I create an ellipse in the earth plane here. As you see, just a portion of an ellipse. In other words, if I completed the ellipse, it would look something like that, and it always runs horizontal, the same direction that the horizon is in, the major axis of the ellipse. So I'm going to heavy it up. Once I get this curvature, and where this portion of the curvature touches this line going to the vanishing point, I head across toward the other vanishing point. And that tells me where this curvature meets the other side. So it's quite different, the curve on the far side, than the one in the foreground. Yeah, this is the ellipse in the horizontal plane, and this is the curvature of the front portion of the boat. Now, once I detect the point in which this curvature touches the line going to the vanishing point, I head it for the opposite vanishing point, and that tells me where this curve will intersect that line. So here you have two different shapes on both sides. Then the next thing I do is give the boat back rake, that is, I slant the boat. And once I've succeeded, finished doing that, I then repeat the same curvature on the bottom and head it for the vanishing point and join this. So I got the boat within the box. The next thing I do is I, I might vary this somewhat, which you're free to do continuously, and then draw the bottom portion of the boat, which might appear something like this. And then, of course, I would add the seats in the boat. Always headed for the vanishing point, as you notice here. It always heads, the seat heads for the vanishing point, so does the intersection. Even if I'm drawing a boat, I draw the box that the boat will fit into. Without that, I have, I don't have a referent. Then the direction of the box helps me decide on the elements that comprise the boat. If I'm to draw a freighter, say, I put the kind of box down that I feel a freighter would fit into. Then I X the front to get the middle line. Now I know that a freighter has a surface that moves in the middle line and flows right into this line with a graceful curve. How do you get that on the other side? You project the point that this line touches this line. You project it back toward the vanishing line. And you've got to comp accomplish this curve in this shorter distance. So in order to get this line to flow into that, you're going to have to bulge it out to get it to flow into that. So the lines are not the same on both sides. That's how I get the shape of a boat. Then I know that the boat has back rake, that is, it leans back. Then I know that a boat drops down, goes back. You have to know something about a boat if you're drawing it. And then I head for the vanishing point, and I repeat this system back here. And I make this, the back end of the boat, I draw an ellipse in the earth plane. And then I curve this down. Now I know that a boat sinks in here, and then it swells out like that. But you have to know a lot about a boat before you would even attempt to draw it. It's sunken in here, then it moves out, then I'll put the cabin up on the boat. I'm going to exaggerate it. I'm going up. How high up? To this line. And I'm going back to the vanishing point.
and dropping down. Then I'm headed back to the vanishing point again. And so, whatever the cabin looks like on the boat, you draw, then if you draw a stack, I'm going to back rake it. That is, there's an ellipse here and an ellipse here. And I draw an ellipse on top, just by emphasizing this size, because the ellipse goes down toward the vanishing point. And as I head this stack to the other vanishing point, that gives me the size of the next stack. So I'm not trying to draw an accurate vote here. I'm showing you the basic principles of how I go about drawing a boat. Although some of my renderings might appear very complex and somewhat beyond your experience, but just watch. No matter how complex a drawing is, it's still the same two vanishing points that we're using during the initial phases of art. So learning how to use those vanishing points and gradually increasing the complexity of the drawing, you will be able to render many different views. If you wish to draw, say, uh, eyeglasses, you draw the kind of box the eyeglass would fit into, then you draw the lens on the left side, the lens on the right side, and the nose bridge. Then you draw the extensions that go back toward the ear. Once you've completed that, you go to the next phase, which is giving the eyeglass portion depth which I'll show you on the next drawing. Notice this box. The function of this box is to begin to shape the lens. The lens isn't straight, or the eyeglass portion is not straight or flat. It's like the next drawing. You'll notice the curvature in this. And that curvature is indicated by the depth of perspective. You notice the depth here shown in this box? I'm going to tilt the paper to make it easier. So I'm going to draw the eyeglasses and give them curvature in this box. I go back to the corner and to the foreground. So here I've changed the shape of the lenses. Of course I can round out the corners and I can add additions, but in order to get to this point, in order to get to this, it's better to draw a box to control the angle of the lenses. Of course, you have to practice this, and that's why I'm having you do all these different boxes in perspective to gain control of shape and configuration.